Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The Boeing C-17 Globemaster is one of the most versatile cargo aircraft in U.S. military history. First introduced in the mid-1990s, the C-17 is well suited to landing and taking off in extreme conditions. Its 170,000 pounds of cargo capacity and 1,600 square foot cargo bay make it ideal for airdrop operations, including dropping Humvees and other vehicles from as much as 5,000 feet. In fact, the C-17 can carry up to 10 of these heavy-duty vehicles allowing the aircraft to support and supply troops on the ground without having to worry about landing. The concept of airdrops has been around for decades. though early efforts mostly involved pushing small crates fitted with parachutes out of cargo bay doors. As technology improved, aircraft were specifically designed with airdrop capabilities in mind. They feature rear access ramps, which can be lowered in flight, and special flooring with metal rollers, which allows easy ejection of heavy equipment. Here you can see the Humvees being driven into a C-17 cargo bay. The inside floor features a number of attachment points to which the vehicles can be tied. This keeps them from shifting during takeoff or flight. A fully loaded Humvee can weigh as much as 8,000 pounds. So if they were to move around the cargo bay, they could do a lot of damage to other equipment. Once the vehicles are in place, the cargo door can be closed until the aircraft reaches its destination. Prepping a C-17 for an airdrop is a completely different story. In this case, Cargo and vehicles must be loaded onto heavy-duty pallets. These pallets are then placed into the cargo bay, using the rollers which are installed on the ramp and the floor. Each pallet will also feature its self-deploying parachute, ensuring the supplies make it safely to the ground. In the cockpit, the pilot and navigator must perform precise calculations involving airspeed and altitude. Without this data, they could easily overshoot or undershoot their target, dropping the cargo into a less desirable or potentially dangerous location. Each pallet must also be labeled in terms of what it contains and how much it weighs. This allows the troops on the ground to prioritize the cargo they collect. Here, you can see a C-17 from the 16th Airlift Squadron executing an airdrop of eight military vehicles over Fort Bragg, North Carolina. In this case, the plane travels at an altitude of around 750 to 1,200 feet.
The Humvees are attached to pallets using tension cables and padded with thick sections of heavy-duty cardboard. Upon nearing the drop position, the C-17 lowers its rear cargo door. And the Humvees are released. As they move to the end of the ramp, parachute cords attached to a line on the cargo bay are removed. This causes the chutes to open the second the pallet hits the air. In just a few seconds, the Humvees are on the ground and ready to be used. While this sort of operation is perfect for getting a fleet of vehicles to the battlefield, there are times when a Humvee or heavy artillery vehicle might need to be moved from one place to another faster than it might take to drive the distance. This is where sling loading can be extremely useful. This process involves attaching a load to the underside of a helicopter typically one with heavy lifting capacity, such as the CH-47 Chinook. Helicopters like this have special cargo hooks built into their fuselage, most of which are capable of carrying thousands of pounds at once. Ground troops will attach heavy cables to these hooks before clearing the area and allowing the helicopter to move the load from one place to another. Here, you can see one of the U.S. military's very best heavy lifting helicopters in action. The Sikorsky CH-53 Super Stallion. The Super Stallion is nearly 100 feet long. And has the ability to carry up to 36,000 pounds via its external cargo hooks. Here, two CH-53s are carrying a wide range of heavy vehicles. including two Humvees simultaneously. Not only are the two pilots able to maintain the direction and speed during this maneuver, but they actually refuel the helicopter while in midair. Of course, the Super Stallion's capabilities extend far beyond its ability to carry vehicles. It can also transport up to 55 troops at a time, travel at speeds of up to 200 miles per hour, and engage ground targets using a wide array of weapons. While the Humvee is a very durable vehicle, it does not provide the same sort of protection as a tank, instead preferring to maximize speed. In the 1970s, General Dynamics Land Systems decided to design a vehicle that could do both. What they came up with was the Light Armored Vehicle, or LAV. Though many different variants have been designed over the years, the average LAV weighs between 10 and 14 tons and can travel at speeds of over 60 miles per hour. 
These vehicles are also incredibly durable, with up to eight wheels, which allow them to traverse a wide range of terrain. Most importantly, they are both armed and armored, providing protection and a way for troops to defend themselves and their allies. Here, you can see a CH-53K King Stallion lifting a light armored vehicle using a sling load. The King Stallion is the upgraded version of the Super Stallion and is currently ranked as the largest and heaviest helicopter in the United States military. The helicopter's central loading hook is rated for 36,000 pounds, while its fore and aft hooks can carry 25,000 pounds each. With such impressive capabilities, moving an LAV around the battlefield is not much of a challenge. What is challenging is flying the aircraft safely with so much weight attached. Typically, the pilot will try to maintain a lower airspeed and altitude to reduce the chances of something going wrong. The King Stallion also has a fly-by-wire system to aid the pilot as it navigates the battlefield. One of the reasons why LAVs are so prized by militaries around the world is that they are capable of traveling across almost any terrain. And that includes water. Here you can see Marines participating in an LAV water course. The vehicles being used here are LAV-25s, which weigh around 14 tons and boast a top speed of 62 miles per hour. In water, however, the vehicles are limited to just under 8 miles per hour, which they achieve through a separate set of propellers installed in the rear. Operating heavy vehicles like this in the water is far different from driving on land, mainly due to the speed and difficulty involved in steering. However, the ability to ford rivers and streams instead of waiting for an airlift is advantageous. This leaves the helicopters free to provide air cover and ensure the safety of the troops. Despite their versatility, there are places where helicopters and airplanes simply can't go. A good example would be the internal well deck of a WASP-class amphibious assault ship. In order to get troops and vehicles from the ship to the shore, many of these vessels carry special hovercraft vehicles known as LCACs. These landing craft air cushions are ideal for amphibious operations as they can move quickly over both water and land. The newer models can carry around 60 tons of troops and equipment while moving at speeds of nearly 50 miles per hour. The LCACs used by the United States Marines are 87 feet long and 47 feet wide, which gives them plenty of space for Humvees, tanks and other vehicles. 
most importantly, LCACs can easily enter an open well deck from the water. significantly speeding up the loading and unloading process. With aircraft like C-17, the Army can move with unprecedented swiftness while still ensuring they have all the equipment, materials, and supplies they need to do their jobs. However, hovercrafts like the LCAC are making it easier than ever to ensure men, women, and vehicles can get their boots on the ground with as little risk as possible. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.